What's up, Journeyers? Hey, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be discussing how and where to carry according to your body type. That, that leads us into our preference, at least personally, our preference of carry. And I mean, Corey, what do you have to say about this? Let, let us know. Uh, one thing I love about carrying the extra mag in the front is always accessibility. Absolutely. It's just easily accessible right here. I'm not digging down in my pocket. I'm not reaching around for a back pocket. It is right in front. Usually my garment is already out of the way and defeated, so my hand can be right there working all from the front up in my workspace up here. Everything is just quicker and closer to me. But one thing I love about when it's carried like this is it really helps balance everything out on my belt. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, it's I didn't think I would like it as much as I do, but with this, I mean, it balances it out from side to side, but also just gives it full retention as opposed to, you know, when it's unity like this, it's tucked in and the gun kind of can tend to yeah. move a little bit and wobble a little bit. When it's like this, I find this sucker not moving inside my pants at all. Also, Absolutely. concealability. I mean, this mag tucks in so well with this tier one. It's got the extra, you know, grooves on this side and where the belt goes, it tucks it in so far. My gun will uh, print for first before the extra mag wheel Absolutely. on this. Absolutely. Um, great things about this as well is like for a seated position, I think the advantage goes to appendix carry as well. Um, some cons, like we mentioned before, let's make sure that we're not entirely biased here. The con being that, yes, in fact, this firearm is pointed at your genitals all day long. Now, keep in mind, if you're gonna carry a gun on you, no matter where it is, shoulder holster, appendix carry, four o'clock ankle, there is still a loaded gun that's pointed at your person. Now, sure, and you know, maybe at four o'clock, you're just gonna shoot off a part of your butt, you know, if there's ever a negligent discharge, but it's still a loaded gun that is inevitably going to cross the path of your body at some point in time, whether from the holster or back into the holster, that chance still exists. So I think outside of the fact that a gun could shoot you, you have to, you know, your own gun could inflict damage on yourself. I think it's important to consider other pros and cons. And one pro for a Penix carry is just accessing that holster and gun in a seated position. I mean, how often do us folks sit for our job or spend time in a vehicle driving from location to location and being able to get to that gun without having to remove a seat belt or dig underneath your body weight to get something out of a back pocket, like in the case of that spare mag with the standalone kind of carry or four o'clock position, getting past your seat belt and your t-shirt to get to that gun. It's exceptionally difficult to draw from the four o'clock position while seated in a vehicle, especially if you're the driver and you're right-handed, right? I mean, like everything is just going against you to get to your gun at that point in time. But I find with appendix carry like this, you, you totally nailed it on the head with the balance, you know, and the comfort here. Um, it took me like a month to finally actually get used to having something carry up front when I moved from four o'clock to appendix carry, but I have no intentions of ever going back. You know, honestly, making sure that it's comfortable to carry up front because I believe there are so many more pros to carrying appendix, like that's one thing that honestly keeps me accountable for my health and fitness. Honestly, like, like I just wanna keep carrying appendix so bad that I just, choose to stay in shape so that it's not uncomfortable for me to carry appendix because I don't want to have to resort to four o'clock carry because all I've been doing is eating like crap lately. So that's one thing kind of just keeps me accountable, you know, is because I just believe in appendix carry so much. Like that's just w another, at least like I would say incentive mm -hmm. to, to stay in shape. So for sure. Yeah, for sure. Appendix carry. I remember right at the beginning of my journey, I thought, Man, you see everybody in the movies, right? Yeah. Six o'clock, that's right. the place to carry. <laughs> it actually conceals pretty well. It does actually. When you're just walking well. around. Obviously, if you bend over, a lot's gonna print. So I started looking into like, oh, I should get this for a left-handed shooter. So it tucks in and I can, right. I can draw. Yeah. And one time I saw a video, uh, just a guy talking about how if you're ever pushed up against a wall right. or you're 
pushed down to the ground, you have zero access now to yeah, your exactly. firearm. Absolutely. That's one of those things that's like, you're pushed, you, you can't get to it now at all. Appendix carry, sure. it's still right up front, whether Absolutely. you're laying on the ground, yeah. whether you're pushed up against the wall, you still have full access, even kind of at the four o'clock. You yeah. don't have access when you're pushed up against the wall like that. So that's kind of some key things to remember. It's comfortable back there, you know, I mean, it conceals really well, but it has zero practicality sure. when it actually comes to a fight. Like actual six o'clock carry. You're talking six o'clock carry. Another danger is like if you fall, let's say you slip on the ice, you know, I mean, that could lead you to paralysis. If you fall on a gun on your lower back like that, if not paralysis at an extreme, definitely some lower back pains, right? For I sure. mean, that's another reason why I definitely don't recommend six o'clock carry. All these other ones, all these other ones are perfectly suitable, um, but. I, the six o'clock here, I think, can get really dangerous. You know, if there is a negligent discharge at that point in time, you have your spine right there too. So I don't exactly. Know. That's one thing I would exactly. I'd avoid personally. I think another thing to address is ankle carry. Sure. Ankle carry is one of those things that's like sounds like a really good idea because it gets all the pressure off your yep. waist. Right. But in practicality of it. I haven't seen a Kydex holster that's around ankle carry. I'm sure they make them, just haven't found them because I haven't done a ton of research. Yeah. But I do have an ankle carry that I keep as a backup once in a while, and I think that's yeah. really the main point of an ankle carry is to have that backup firearm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't recommend it either because uh, one pro that you definitely have with any one of these options up here is that you can draw on the move, let's say, whereas with an ankle carry holster, you're likely going to have to at least stop or hop to access that ankle holster and draw your gun from there. And in a case in point where you're trying to get to concealment or you're trying to get to your vehicle for a secondary primary primary carbine or weapon of any sort, whether it be a PDW or something like that, um, help in general. Anyways, just trying to draw on the move with an ankle holster is uh, not very effective, doable. Another thing is that if you're carrying around, you know, a pound to three pounds on one ankle, that's gonna offset weight. You're gonna step funny and maybe that'll lead to, you know, asymmetric differences in your gait eventually. I don't I don't know, but I just don't think it's a very practical carry besides in a situation where maybe you wanna carry a backup gun for yourself or for a secondary person that isn't willing to carry a gun on them. Those would be at least my talking points on ankle carry, but I, I typically don't carry ankle carry. Um, in fact, I only did one time as like a joke. I just threw an LCP in my boot just for funsies and it was wildly uncomfortable. I didn't have a proper holster for it. I just threw it in the boot just to say I did, but I don't recommend that. These are obviously our primary recommendations. Moving on to the last one would be inside the waistband four o'clock. Yeah, w go ahead. These are, uh, it's, it really is a good option if you've got a little more love in the front. Um, yeah. And compared to like outside the waistband at the three, four o'clock position, which is comfortable, but yeah. like we talked about, it doesn't conceal very well at all. You lift your shirt up, you get the bottom of that holster sticking out. Sure. And I noticed too, like it would cover my pocket. I couldn't get my hand in my pocket yep. to get some things out Absolutely. I needed because that holster was covering it up and the pockets, you know, ride in different spots on different pants. But inside the waistband at the four o'clock position is, is good. Yeah, it does absolutely. print a lot um, as you go to bend over and different things, but it is a comfortable position. I did kind of feel like you were just talking about with your ankle carry. It it did offset my hips a little bit. That's what I love about appendix carry is it's all the weight is here yeah. and distributed evenly with a good belt around my waist. Sure. But carrying at that one spot, I noticed I get in my car and I'm carrying back there. This is kicking up against my seat. Sure. You know, I didn't. I just couldn't access it very well if yeah. I'm sitting in the car absolutely. as opposed to appendix like you. If it's up front, I got it, and it's right there no matter what. So this is uh, another good option. It does conceal better if you've got a little more love in the front and it's yeah. a little more comfortable. But I just didn't find that it worked well for me and the way and the things that I wanted to be able to do. And so, like you talked about as well, it's kind of forced me to appendix carry because I see the far greater value of carrying it up front and having Absolutely. that accessibility Absolutely. as well. Yeah, I tried putting this on here just before we began filming in the appendix position. This one particularly did a terrible job at concealing in the appendix carry. I put it on four o'clock and it did a pretty good job. It was actually pretty comfortable. The retention's good on it, which is another thing to consider with whatever holster you get. But I did notice when I just imitated bending down to pick something up that it printed pretty badly out the back of my shirt. And four o'clock position for a right-handed shooter 
in a driver's seat is one of the most inaccessible areas to access your gun. And I mean, think of how many of us actually sit throughout the day, whether it be in a vehicle, just in regular transit, or for a job, how much you're actually sitting in. Being able to access that gun in a seated position becomes so much more difficult in the four o'clock carry inside the waistband or outside the waistband. But this is an extremely popular carry style. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody that carries four o'clock should think that their carry is less significant or inferior in any ways. Obviously, like we already mentioned, just carrying a gun on you, no matter where it's at or how it is, um, just carrying a gun is obviously the most important thing. The fact that it's comfortable, that it conceals, and that it's accessible is obviously, I think, the three most important things, no matter where you carry on your body, including four o'clock appendix, inside the waistband or out. One thing that um, we could touch on a little bit, I guess, is like female carry. I touch on it mostly just referring to the fact that we don't have a lot of knowledge in that field. Obviously, we're men and we appendix carry. So getting into the specific facets of how a woman is going to carry, like potentially with these ulti clips in typically a smaller frame gun, like a shield, a 43, 42, uh, SIG 365, Hellcat, something like that. Um, the other options for females to carry is gonna be like a corset carry, belly band, um, girder carry, like on the thigh, purse carry, which of those mentioned just then and there, purse carry is my least recommended because of the fact that it's off the body carry. And you never know where you're gonna set your purse down, if your children are gonna get into it. I recommend no matter where you carry that you have it on your body so that you have responsibility and access to that gun at all times. You know, you can be accountable for that gun when it's on your person no matter what. So honestly, when you think about it, what's the first thing someone's going to go for too for ladies that are carrying a purse? Absolutely. Their purse. They're going for a purse. Yep. Then you just lost everything in your purse and that firearm. And your means of defending yourself, right? So like Corey mentioned, we'll leave some links down below for a couple other offerings uh, as far as information for females to carry because I personally don't think enough females carry. I, I don't. I'd love to see more women carrying a gun on them. Hey, thanks again for watching. We'd love for you to check out our website, theconcealedjourney.com. We got some swag, we got some vinyls, some ammo can labels over there. Plus our training schedule is on there as well. You got anything else? Just appreciate you all being here. This is fantastic. We really love doing this. Hope you enjoy it as much as we do. So stay tuned and we'll see you again next time, folks.